Today we're going to go over actions and some keyboard shortcuts that make my workflow speed up and be quicker and make me able to move between programs a lot easier. Uh, I do apologize for this one's tardiness. I have been extremely busy the last few weeks. It is currently May the 2nd in 2024 and I have just been absolutely swamped this last month. So I do apologize, but we will get into it today. Uh, to start, we are going to be in Lightroom. Um, the first one we are going to do is just a single blended or infused image. So we have our image here that I have run through infuse. I have a tutorial on that if you are looking on how to do that or you have not seen it before. So please check out that video. But we are not going to be going through that today. Um, we're not going to be going through the presets that I use in here either. That'll be a separate video. So we keep this concise. So we have our blended infused image here and we have our flash frame. Presets have already been applied to them. We are going to take these into Photoshop. Now you could right click this, go to edit in and choose this. That is a bit slow. And when I am working at speed and I need to be editing things quickly, I am going to open them as layers. I know that I talk a lot about using smart object layers, but I use them more uh, decisively kind of more targeted when I have issues and I need to adjust but in 99% of my cases I'm just opening them as layers because they are lightweight they have a lot smaller of a file size they are much easier to work with and they are faster so we are going to open this the quick way which I do which is hold down the alt key hit P hit E hit the up arrow and press enter both of them selected, that is going to open them as layers. And you will get very quick at that uh, very quickly. And I usually just Alt PE up enter, boom, and it's open and we're here. So now what we're going to do is we are going to make our action. So I will show you that action. I have them bound to the F keys, so F2. You can't bind it to F1 because it's a Photoshop default. And at least I have not been able to bind it to F1. So. We will use F2 for this one, but I will show you what it does and then we will go build it. So the first thing, I have nothing selected. I always click in this area down here to deselect. You could hit Control D, but I just, that's how I do it. You hit F2, <clears throat> it instantly builds my flash ambient blend with a one flash frame. So it takes and it puts that ambient layer on top of the flash layer. It labels all of them. It puts the ambient layer in luminosity. It then adds my 50% opacity ambient layer on top of that. It then adds another ambient layer with 100% opacity, but with a black mask to hide it. And then it puts a window layer with a darkened blending mode on there as well. So the first thing that we wanna do is we are going to come in here and we are gonna go to our actions and we are going to go down here. I'm going to collapse all these guys because they are quite large with all the steps they have in them. We're going to make a new one. You can put them in whatever folder you want. You could leave them in the default action. You can click this folder here and it will make a new one. I'm going to call this one YouTube so that I have a separated one. You can call it whatever you like. With that folder selected, you're going to press this plus icon. <clears throat> you're going to want to name this one. So I'm going to do YouTube one flash. You can call it whatever you'd like. And I'm going to hit record. Okay. So the first thing that I always do is I hit my deselect so that it, no matter what layer I'm on, when I push that key, it will deselect everything. Then you're going to hold down alt and press right bracket. That will select the bottom most layer. You cannot click on it because if you click on it, it's going to target this file name when it makes the selection and it will vary every single time. So we're gonna go and name those something consistent so that we can click them and it always targets them. So this is our flash frame. We will double click the name and we are going to type flash and hit enter. It will record that layer name. We are then going to hold Alt and press that right bracket again, and it will select the next layer. Double click that and call that ambient. You can call it whatever you want, as long as you understand that that is the ambient layer. Hit enter, it will record that. Now we can freely click these guys, okay? So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to get my ambient layers built. So I am going to Control J to make a copy of this and I'm going to Control J one more time. We are going to click that first ambient layer 
and we are going to put that on a luminosity blending mode. We are then going to click the second layer, the ambient copy, and we are going to put it at 50% opacity. We're then going to click that third ambient layer, hold alt and click the mask icon. That will hide it, okay? Now we are going to select our flash layer, control J to copy it, take it all the way to the top. I like to double click it and type window poll or windows. It does not matter as long as you know. Hit that, then hold alt and click the mask again. And now deselect and then come up here and hit stop. That will stop the recording process. And so now we have this YouTube flash layer or this flash ambient blend done. So what we can do, let's go back to where we had this opened and I will show you how that works. So right here is where we are. Let's just have a layer selected, it doesn't matter. We'll hit play and boom, instantly it makes it. And you can bind those if you didn't already do it. I, uh, let's see, double clicking it, not on the name, just to the right. And you can come up to the function key and you can bind it here. You can then add a modifier to it if you would like but I typically like to leave them as F2 is my single flash, F3 is my double flash, F4 will be flatten, F5 will be color layer, and then if I have anything else, I can use that F6, F7, F8. Okay, <clears throat> so that is how we build a single flash layer. So let's go and build a double flash layer. Okay, so now we have these guys. Same thing, two flash, regular, infused image. We're going to hold Alt, hit P, hit E, hit up, and hit Enter. It'll open them up in a new window. <clears throat> and we will build our double. It is similar to our last one, except we are just adding an extra window pull layer. So we will start it the same exact way. We will have it deselect so that you can see that. So we'll come in here into our actions panel. By the way, I forgot. If you don't have your actions panel, you can come up here to window and hit actions and it will pull it up. And it looks like a little play symbol. You can drag it wherever you'd like. I keep mine up here. I usually don't have it uh, open all the time because uh, I just push the buttons. So we'll come down here and we will hit this plus button again and we will call this YouTube to flash or whatever you would like to label it. You can put it in a set here if you didn't have it selected like I did. I'm gonna put it in YouTube so it stays and we're recording. So the way this is organized is we have our infused image on the top or our HDR image, whatever you're using. It doesn't even have to be HDR, just our ambient images on the top. We then have our first flash and our second flash. It is important to note when you are doing this one, which flash you would like to be your um, base layer. So <clears throat> I typically, the way I shoot, my first flash frame that I shoot, unless it is an error, which I usually delete in the field, um, is typically going to be my base layer. And then my second one is going to be my, what I call a maintenance frame, where it is to remove a flash pop that is on something reflective, where it is to remove it on a window um, so I can get a clean window pull and use it to kind of work around that. It is the layer that I'm using to fix something in the first layer that I couldn't do <clears throat> because of shooting conditions, because I was doing something specific. I hope that makes sense. So we know that this one is going to be our base layer and this one is going to be our second uh, flash window pull. So we are going to deselect first. We will then hold Alt, push the right bracket, grab this one. We are gonna call this one flash two because this is our second flash. I spelled that wrong, but that's okay. We are going to hold Alt and press the right bracket again to go up. We are going to spell that one flash this time. And then we are going to hold Alt again and press that right bracket, double click on the name as we have been and type ambient, hit enter. All right, 
Now we can freely click on these guys because we have relabeled them and Photoshop is not going to be targeting a specific file name uh, with a serial number. So now we will build our ambient layers. So we know that we need two of them. So hit Control J and Control J one more time. We will come down here to our ambient. Let's stick with ambient for a minute. And we will go to luminosity. We will then click on ambient copy and we will put this at a 50% opacity. Hit enter. And we will then click on ambient two and we will hold alt and click the mask icon. Now we will grab flash two and drag him up. We will turn it to a darken mode and we will alt and click on the mask. We will then duplicate, click on this flash layer and control J to duplicate it and bring this guy up. And we are going to change flash copy to window or we'll do flash one or windows, whatever you want. So you know. It doesn't matter as long as you know what it is for. This is how my brain works. I see the sequence and I know what it is. So that is why I don't really need it to be exact. But if it helps for you, you can label these window pull one, window pull two, whatever you'd like as long as it's consistent. We have made it now a darken mode and we are going to hold alt and click the mask hide. And now it's built. We can hit, click down here to deselect and press the stop button. Now let's go see what that looks like. We will make sure we have all of our layers pulled in. Never remember, right here, okay? So we'll just have the middle layer selected so I can show you it doesn't matter. We will come and click on our YouTube 2 flash or whatever you labeled it and you'll hit play. And it instantly builds a two flash, flash ambient blended layer. Now we're not getting into editing any of these. We're not gonna get into taking any of it out. This is just about my actions. So now we will go ahead and make a color correction layer. We are not going to go over color correction in this one. Color correction is a very wide, um, I guess color cast removal would be the best way to do it. Not really color correction. This is a layer that is gonna be used to get rid of color casting that might be coming from uh, an imbalance of the interior lighting and the daylight, uh, different colored lights, what have you, a way to kind of help smooth out some of those inconsistencies. So for this one, we are going to make sure we have everything flattened. This is after I flatten everything. This typically happens at the end. I'm not gonna go over how to do it in this video. That'll be another video. But this is how you make that layer. So we will deselect just to make sure we're good. We are gonna go up here and click on YouTube and hit the plus icon. We are going to call this one, well, YouTube color and hit record. All we're gonna do is come down here and add a new layer. You can use the keyboard shortcut if you'd like to. I typically confuse it with uh, a new Photoshop document. So I always go down here and press the plus sign. That adds a new layer. I'm going to select that layer and I'm going to call it color cast. Hit enter. We are then going to come up here to the blending mode menu and we are going to select color. And then I like to be ready with this one. So I hit deselect and press B so that it's ready. And then you hit stop. And that way when you're done, you're out on your brush, you're ready to go. Uh, because you'll be using your brush for it, etc., etc. And you can see now, let's go change that real quick and I'll show you how that worked. When we come into that YouTube color layer, hit play, it instantly makes it, changes it over to color, selects my brush and deselects everything else and I'm instantly ready to go. Those are all of the actions that I use. I use a control W, that is another one I've seen some people um, say they didn't know. Control W in most Windows applications will just close the window. So it won't close Photoshop, it won't quit the program, but it will close this. So I would save it. I'm not going to in this one because I don't need to do that, but I would hit Control W and it just closes it. And then I'm ready to go back to Lightroom. That way it keeps um, Photoshop from eating too much memory because Photoshop is just a extremely hungry application. Um, and it just keeps it nice and clean. That way I'm working on one file at a time and I don't get confused. I don't have too many of them up because system performance is a huge one. I have an absolute beast of a machine. 
um, and it's only now finally feeling fast enough, if that makes sense. Um, so it's a great way to keep everything uh, to a minimum on like performance negatives, I guess. Uh, but that is it. I don't really have anything else that I use. I have in the past tended to over edit things. So I try to keep things to a nice clean minimum editing style right now. Um, but if there are any other actions you guys are looking for, if you need help creating something, if you have something specific, let me know. Actions can be quite confusing. They are super powerful once you understand how they work. They're basically just a workflow that you record and you can press play to repeat. There are definitely some things you need to keep in mind when doing it. Um, the file naming is the biggest one because if you are selecting things that have a specific file name, um, like a lot of mine have come out with INT for interiors and then the serial number, if you specifically select something with that name, Photoshop will remember that. That's why I use the alt and right bracket or left bracket. It selects the forward or next layer. It does not select a specific file name. So that's why it works. It can be a little confusing, but it's very powerful. You can save actions to open certain things. If you use like Nick effects, if you have some luminosity masking that you want to select every single time that you like that you have found, you can use it to do that. There's many things. We will have other videos on how to use Raya Pro. I don't use Lumenzia. I may try and download the free version and use it. I does not work for my brain. Again, this is not the me saying this is the best way to do things. This is not me saying that this is the correct way of doing them. I know that I do things that are probably a lot, they take a lot more time than some people, but it's what works for my brain and what makes me fast, and what makes me comfortable and feel confident when I'm editing it, which is why I do it. And that's the name of the game because if I can confidently and consistently produce work, I would rather do that than try and be a master at every single Photoshop shortcut or every single, this is the quickest way of doing things, blah, blah, blah. Because the confidence in it is what, and the, is what gives me the consistency. And that consistency is what my clients pay me for. So being the fastest on these things or doing certain things like, oh, this isn't the exact perfect way of doing it. That's, that's just not who I am. And that's not what this is. But I hope this helped you guys. Again, let me know what else you guys need to think. I'm going to try to put as many of the keyboard commands on screen while doing this. And then I will try and put them down below. I appreciate the people who have gone back and transcribed what I have done and put it in the comments. I see it. I pin it so other people can see it. Um, and I appreciate you guys. So thank you guys so much. I hope this helped. We'll see you on the next one.